probably heard over and over and over again if you are reading up on Pinterest is that you need to have long vertical pins. And the dimensions for how those are optimized have changed, but one of the tools that I found makes it really easy to make vertical pins is Canva. Now you can get Canva for work, which is a more, um, it has a cost to it every year, or you can get regular Canva that's free. So I'm using a version of Canva for work. Um, you have folders and things like that in there. So your Canva might look a little bit different if you are not paying for Canva. It's really affordable if you do decide to do it. But either way, you can still create Pinterest graphics with Canva. So the first thing is to open up Canva and then click on Pinterest graphic. Now they already have it optimized for the best dimensions on Pinterest. And if you have a lot of pictures or maybe you want to put a full tutorial on Pinterest, this isn't going to be big enough. So there's a couple ways that we can deal with that. But the first thing you want to do is figure out how many pictures you have for this project. So for this particular project, I have seven photos. So I want to go over here to elements over on the left. And then from there, I want to choose grids. Now the grids are actually a little bit easier to use in PicMonkey. However, everything else, everything else in Canva is way more powerful. So I like Canva better for making my Pinterest um, collages. So this one looks like it might work. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I can probably get away with six photos on this project. Um, there's another one. This has a big photo with like a bunch of little boxes. So you can kind of look, there's a tall skinny one. That one, this one probably won't work for this project because it will be really tall and skinny on this one side. So you kind of can look through and figure out this one has eight photos and then a big picture on the bottom. Sometimes they'll have everything where it's kind of flip flopped and mirror image. So I want to see if maybe they have one with, with the big picture on top and eight on the bottom or even this one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six total. Um, so you just kind of got to look around and see until there's a grid that will probably fit what you need. I think this one's going to work the best. So it'll plop the grid down and it will stretch it to fit your uh, document or whatever size it is. But you can stretch it for however you want it to be. If you do something you don't want it to do, just click undo and it will undo the last step. Next, you need to find some photos. Whoops, so I had clicked on a photo by accident there. I need the supply list, this one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. You don't need that one, wait, that's, I want the beauty shot one, supplies two, beauty shot supplies, step one, step two, step three, step four. And I think that's good, so let's try it with this. This is another picture that belonged to something else. Once your photos are uploaded, you're just gonna drag them over to the slots and when it kind of lights up, then you let go and it will drop it into that box. If you don't do that, like if I just click on it, it'll drop it in the middle of the grid there. So I'm just gonna drag and drop them to the different places. Now, I don't really like the way that this looks because these are all kind of squished. I want them, these boxes to be a little taller. And I feel like there's nowhere for me to put a title here. Like I can't really explain this whole project just in this grid like this. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to change dimensions and I'll click use custom dimensions. So it's 735 wide by 1102 tall. I need to make it taller. So I'm going to make it 1400. Now when you stretch it to 1400, then the grid stays the same size. So you have to stretch it to fit this new um, new dimension. And you can crop and move things on the inside too. So let's crop this one. I want to show that I'm using that ink on there. Let's crop this one. You can also make them a little bit bigger. So like I don't really want that watermark to show that's down here on the left. And then this one, whoops, this one I want to crop it too so I can see those little inks there, but I don't want that watermark. Let's see, maybe like that will work. Let's say you can't find a grid that you really want. Find a grid that has the number of steps you want. So here I need five steps. So I found a grid that has that many steps and I'm just going to drag it down.
In fact, I think what I'm going to do is try to find one with three. That has four, three. Okay. And I can put these side by side. You can see that the line, the purple lines show up when they're both lined up. Hit them both or highlight them both. And then I can drag the corner of both to make sure that they fit on here. And that line will show up in the center if they're centered. So that's good. So I'm going to go back to uploads. I want this one to be my main photo, so I'm just going to put it up here in the middle. And since I don't really want this watermark on here, I can go ahead and crop that photo up here, even though it's not inside of a grid. Okay, and I can drag it to make it larger. And I can drag all of my steps over to where those need to be. And what I think is the problem is that all these pictures are different sizes. So when you do want to make a Canva collage, it is a little simpler if you make all your pictures the same size. So if you didn't want to go with doing the grids, you could just freeform it. It's a little harder, but it's possible. So I think that's what we're going to have to do here. So I have supplies. I have step two. So it's a little bit easier because you get those lines where everything kind of can line up together. And like I have these lined up now that I do, I can just drag them both to resize. So now I want to add some words in here to describe what this is. So this needs to be bigger. We need to find a font that we want. All right, maybe it needs to be smaller. <laughs> I like that you can put stuff to be uppercase without having to like type the whole thing in uppercase. That's kind of nice. Make that bigger. We can also change some of the text spacing so it just fits in here a little bit nicer. You can also change the colors of the writing, but we're not going to do that for this one. And you want to put your little website on there, so we're going to go ahead and add that. Now say that you're doing this for a client blog or like maybe you're on a design team. This is a good way to get some brownie points with the coordinator because if you just show up with your image already done, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is awesome because like they don't have to do it now. You're going to save them a lot of work. So I got this. It's easy to read. This is about the size it's going to show up on 
Pinterest, I could possibly make this a tad bigger. If I go up to 36, I need to change my spacing just a little bit narrower. And you can see a hand painted welcome sign. You can see all the steps and what we used. Awesome, it's done. Click, you, you can change the name too. So I don't want it just to be hand painted wood. Hand painted wood welcome sign with color box. Crafters ink, eyes ink, and switch accent ink. Clear snap, done download high quality PNG and now it's ready for you to upload directly to Pinterest with your link or you can embed it in your blog. I don't recommend putting like your whole long pin into your blog because it just looks kind of ugly so you could use um, some code to put it in the blog post but hide it from view but it will show up when you go to pin. So um, I hope this was helpful if you are having trouble making your own long pins I recommend using Canva. You don't need Canva for work. You can use just regular Canva. You can use their grids or you can just build your own um, grid within Canva just by dragging the photos and dragging the edges here and there. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section. I would be happy to answer them. And you can always come and join our Facebook group over at Smart Creative Social on Facebook where we have all kinds of tips and tricks and questions and we have a whole community of other members there who have lots of amazing knowledge. So if I can't answer your question, they definitely can. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.